Number one, endless coffee. A coffee before I start my walk, another after the first seven kilometers. An espresso after lunch, an espresso after dinner. The cafe con leche is creamy and strong, and sometimes the best thing to do is to order the grande. A cup of coffee is so large, it fills both hands and you hold it like a small bowl. Sometimes the coffee is from a vending machine, but even this somehow tastes good. Milky and a little sweet and dumped into a plastic cup, powering you through the next kilometers. Sometimes the coffee comes with a view. Sometimes the coffee comes with friends. But always the coffee is good. Number two, spending entire days outside. I loved spending so much of my time outdoors when I was on the Camino. Whether it was on a beautiful day full of sunshine, or walking against a strong wind, or even being pelted by the rain, I felt so, so alive. Number three, the moment just after I finished doing laundry. You wring out the last sock and secure it to the clothesline, and this is the perfect moment because everything is finished. You've walked all of your kilometers for the day. You've found an albergue and spread your sleeping bag over your bunk. You've charged your phone and showered and done your laundry, and now you can relax. You can lounge on the lawn, or you can explore the village, or have a drink with your friends, or study your guidebook, or have a menu del dia lunch. It's mid-afternoon, and you've done your work for the day. Number four, those hilarious, almost delirious moments when you've simply been walking too long. The sun is shining, not a cloud in the sky. The path of the Camino stretches long and straight all the way to the horizon. You've been walking for hours, and the village where you're planning to stay is nowhere in sight. You swat at a fly buzzing around your head and squint into the distance. There's something ahead, and it looks big. It's moving. Could it be galloping? Is that a horse? You turn to the friend walking beside you. It's a horse, you say, pointing. A horse on the Camino. Your friend looks back at you, a smile on her face, but a touch of concern in her eyes. That's not a horse, she says. That's just another pilgrim. Number five, quick connections. Sometimes you'll meet someone on the Camino and walk with them for days or weeks and you'll form a very close friendship and connection. But this can happen with the fleeting encounters as well. Just a day in someone's company, an hour over coffee, a series of smiles and waves as you move across Spain. Somehow, these smaller encounters can take on great significance on the Camino. Some of my favorite pilgrims are those who I only knew for a fleeting moment. Number six, waking up every day and feeling like anything was possible. Some might find their Camino days to be boring, nothing but the same routine, kilometer after kilometer of walking. But I found so much possibility in every single day, moments of surprise and delight and joy. The thrill of adventures, big and small. The questions, where would I get my coffee? Where would I stay that night? Would I make a new friend? Would I see the pilgrim that I shared a drink with three days ago? Would I have an inspiring conversation? Would I laugh until my sides ached? Would I see a castle? or a cathedral, or a field of sunflowers, or a long line of cows? When else in life do you get to ask yourself these kinds of questions?